Hi everyone, and welcome to Butchery 101. Today, I'll be making a stuffed pork belly roulade. This beautiful slab of pork belly is from Olson Farms up in Colville, Washington. Olson pigs are super happy, well-fed, outdoor animals. They also raise beef and lamb, and their potatoes are seriously the best in the biz. I've worked with Olson Farms for a long time, and their pigs are all over Seattle restaurants. You can order their meat online and find them at the Ballard Farmer's Market and the Tight Five pop-up shop, among many other places. Skin on pork is actually kind of hard to source from small local farms. To my knowledge, only one processor in Washington can do it for retail meat. So if you want crispy pork skin from really delicious local meat, make sure to give your farmer or butcher plenty of lead time when you order, and also just appreciate that they probably went through extra lengths to get it to you. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to score the skin. That achieves a few things. One, the fats can render more easily. Two, the skin dries out and crisps, uh, crisps up better because of the added surface area, and it'll be easier to cut when it's all done. Be super careful when you're doing this part. I actually slowed down this footage so we could really check out what's going on. Notice how far my left hand is from the blade at all times. When, even when I'm resetting the knife at the top of the meat, I'm also pointing it slightly to the right so I don't risk stabbing my left hand. I find that with these narrow blades, it's not really worth it to guide the knife. Um, for the most part, it won't matter if these lines slant just a little by the end. And then, I didn't include this in the video, but I did turn the belly about 90 degrees and repeated these cuts to achieve the crosshatch pattern. So here you can see how deep I was cutting, and honestly, I could have gone a bit deeper. The goal is to cut just the skin to expose the fat. The deepest cuts you see here are just about the perfect depth. But honestly, this will be fine too. The pig was raised well and slaughtered humanely, so the vast majority of the flavor we're gonna get from it is already there. We're just gilding the lily at this point. And now we'll move on to the butterflying. Butterflying usually refers to cutting a piece of meat through the middle laterally, often so we can stuff or season it. I chose to start the cut here at the thinnest corner of the belly just to make sure that I get one full rectangle and therefore an evenly rolled roast. So at the top right corner is the thinnest part. I'm placing our cut in the very center and scoring all the way down the right side of the belly. That way, the layer of fat just under the skin will be an even thickness and again, we're shooting for the most even and full rectangle to roll up. It's just like when you're rolling out dough for cinnamon rolls. With my left hand, I'm pulling the top layer away with active but even tension the whole time. This helps with keeping the cut centered because I can aim for the very middle of the cut. And feel free 
to just take your time with this. All these small little cuts will result in a really even surface and all of your patience will be worth it. Butterflying is a cool, kind of advanced butchery technique that you can use on tons of cuts. So try it out and see what else you can butterfly. By the way, at no point is the knife tip actually pointed directly at my left fingers. Just behind the belly, they're curled up safely away from the path of the knife. It sounds really pessimistic, but you want to work in a way that minimizes damage in case of accidents. So if you're really tired or rush or somebody bumps into you while you're working, the worst case scenario is a messed up piece of meat and not an injury to yourself or colleague or family member. I'm also feeling with my left hand how thick the back of the belly is so I can slow down when we're close to that edge. You don't want to cut a hole through that part because that would let stuffing press out the side. you can see I'm holding the left side open and there's a one to two inch section that isn't laying quite flat. So what that says to me is that the meat there is still a little bit thick. So I'll just snip that little part down. Again, being careful to not cut all the way through. This process is actually a really good exercise in shallow, moderate cutting, which is actually a lot of what you do in whole animal butchery. It's just, it's really good to learn that restraint. And so there you have it, our butterflied pork belly. It's super important to keep meat cold while you're working on it, so I'm gonna go pop it in the freezer to chill it down quickly while we work on the stuffing. So here are a few ingredients we just had in the kitchen for other stuff, like that leftover sourdough toast from breakfast that day and everything else we got for other dishes. But if you can balance flavors and know what you like, you can make really fantastic food without using recipes. So pay attention to what you like, take notes, and accept the challenge of creating crazy delicious things within limitations. Play it safe at first, but if it doesn't work out, try something else next time. And now we're going to put it all together. Okay, so here we have our chilled butterflied belly. You can even see how stiff the left side is here, and that's because the fat is super cold and therefore firm. Very nice to work with. I'm just giving it a little kosher salt sprinkle. You could also brine the belly if you like that kind of thing, but I didn't have time and I honestly hate brining in my current kitchen. Turn the belly so that the skin is on the boards but away from you. That will eventually be the top of the roast. Here's the stuffing. I chopped everything up and moistened it with a little beef stock. Actually, we made that stock out of tendons you get from hanger steaks. Um, it's super gelatinous and flavorful, and we made it from stuff a lot of people would throw away. Again, try to use everything and waste nothing. Work with what you have. It's a really great way to get good with food. stuffing up evenly and then starting from the bottom roll the whole thing up. I do wish I had put more stuffing towards the bottom there. That would mean the middle of the roll would get more stuffing and it's less likely to squish out the top as you roll it, but this was still fine anyway. And there you have it, a nicely butterflied rolled and stuffed pork belly with scored skin. And now we're on 
into the trussing and we're almost done. So here's my butcher's twine. I like it to roll freely, so I'll usually have it in a six pin on a shelf underneath my station, somewhere between me and the meat. You take the cut end there and floss it under the roast, then pull it over the top, tie your butcher's knot, oop, 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 tighten it, close it with a square knot, and then cut. You want to start in the middle there and then tie each end. That way, the meat is secured evenly throughout the roast and the stuffing doesn't slide out the side. If you don't want to practice this just yet, you can totally use bamboo skewers to secure the roast. Let me know in the comments if you want a more detailed tutorial on this knot. It's super easy once you know it, and all you really need is practice. Once I got as many ties on here as I wanted, I roasted him at 350 degrees for maybe 20 minutes, and then turned the heat down to 300 degrees Fahrenheit to let the meat slowly come up to 190 degrees internal temp. At that point, the meat was tender, but not shreddable. And if you really, really want to step up your crispy skin game, turn on the broiler and toast the skin until it's crispy and bubbly. Just pretend like it's a huge marshmallow. This pork was so lovely, you guys, and I'm so glad you could all join for this tutorial. Let me know in the comments what you think. My goal is to continue butchery education without gathering people up, and I'd love to know if this method seems effective. Thanks again so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for new videos weekly. As always, stay strong, stay safe, and stay home. We got this, Seattle. Thank <laughs> you.